Today I'd like to talk to you about putting low flow bypasses on pilot operated pressure reducing valves. In front of me I have a ZW209 pilot operated pressure reducing valve. And one of the characteristics of pilot operated valves, and especially the pressure reducing valve, are low flow characteristics. All pilot operated pressure reducing valves have minimum flow characteristics. And if we're to fall under those flow rates, the valve, quite frankly, doesn't know how to react. It doesn't know whether it should be open or closed. So when we fall below that minimum continuous flow rate, we can have chattering, shaking, swings in pressure. Again, the valve just doesn't know whether it should be open or closed. So what we need to do is we need to bypass around the pilot-operated uh, pressure-reducing valve with a low-flow bypass. And it's relatively straightforward in nature. Here I also have a Model 600 direct acting pressure reducing valve, and this would be the type of valve that we would use for a low flow bypass. So in essence what I'm trying to do is to plumb these two valves in parallel, and I want to set my low flow bypass such that the, all of the minimum flow rates flow through the low flow bypass, and once I exceed the minimum flow rate of the ZW209, at that point it will begin to open up. So as far as sizing goes, it's relatively straightforward. I want to choose a direct acting pressure reducing valve that will meet the flow characteristics, the low flow characteristics, that is, of the pilot operated valve with approximately a five pound fall off. So again, what we're trying to do is to encourage the flow, all low flows from zero up to the minimum flow rate of the pilot operated valve to go through the direct acting pressure reducing valve. Once we exceed that flow rate, the pilot operated valve will begin to open from there. So again, from a sizing standpoint, once more I'll try to repeat this because it's relatively straightforward. You want to choose a direct acting PRV that will meet the minimum flow characteristics of the pilot operated valve with approximately a 5 PSI fall off. Once I have both valves plumbed into the system in parallel, we determine what our downstream static pressure needs to be and we set the direct acting pressure reducing valve to that value. Then we will set the pilot operated CW209 to 5 PSI less than that pressure. All low flows from zero up to the minimum flow rate of the pilot operated valve will flow through the model 600. Once we exceed that flow rate, we'll go ahead and have the big valve open up and at that point in time, both valves will be flowing at once. Now again, the reason we're doing this is if we fall below the minimum flow characteristics of the ZW209, we can have shaking, chattering, uh, unsteady pressure. The valve just doesn't know whether it should be open or closed. So to compensate for that, we'll go ahead and use that low flow bypass. I want to thank you for viewing our video today. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more product information or to contact a customer care representative, please visit our website at www.cern.com.